All right, folks. Here we are, back for some more work on the Silent King. So, in case any of you are just joining us for the first time, this is a challenge paint job. And so we're gonna be using this Dollar Store makeup brush from the Wet n Wild series. It has been thoroughly cleaned in between each time we use it, but you can see it's now starting to get a little worse for wear. You can start to see it's starting to get a bunch of those little hairs. Oh, I'm trying to catch that over there. There we go. I do have a little bit different lighting set up today, so hopefully the camera will focus on what it should be focusing on, and it already looks a little bit better. So we'll see how it goes. So let's talk about what we did last time. Last time we came through and we put a lot of the base coat, or not base coats, so we put a lot of the shadows and a lot of the highlights that are going to be visible in the final model or the finished version of the model on. And we did that by dry brushing various colors of gray, starting with a very dark gray and moving all the way up to a fairly light gray. In fact, you can see it on the palette there, that final gray. I haven't cleaned this since the last time, but these are very dry now. I then came in and I, in between shoots, I did the lightning on the bottom and all I did was take white right off my palette and go right onto it after I thinned it just a little bit. So this is ever so slightly thinned white. Then I came back and I just strengthened the center of each one of these pieces here. So I just strengthened that up just a little bit, come in with a stipple action with white on it uh, to go around so it does have a little bit more of an OSL effect. Came in here, strengthened that as well, and then I did the same thing here. I just gave it one more additional coat all the way down, leaving of course the darkest parts here so that we'll be able to see that in the final. Now once we're about to go through and put in the uh, glow effect on here, I will come back in here and I will use some of our arid earth just for a little bit of warmth. So that's what we accomplished last time. Uh, most of the highlights have been added to the model here. Additionally, we base coated this part here, which is going to be a kind of warm brass color. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the process. So what we're gonna do today starting off is we're gonna take these parts here and we're gonna go ahead and start getting them to a kind of warm coppery brass consistency. And so these are all non-metallic metals here. I'm not using any metallic metals here. I do feel like this brush is particularly good at applying these non-metallic metals just because you do get the stipple pretty well with this kind of blunt end here and you do get to dry brush fairly well with it. So we're gonna start building up. So this is Rhinox hide that you see right here. From Rhinox hide, we're actually gonna move up just a little bit. We're gonna use <clears throat> an additional product here from Citadel. And this is Mornfang Brown. And we're gonna mix some Mornfang Brown with a little bit of Mephestin Red. And so I want a kind of leather copper color to go down next. I do want for these pieces of the model to be a bit warm. And I'm gonna have that be contrasted against the Silent King, who's gonna be a very cold, pale gold color. When we go to our reference here, which is here, we can see that they're not actually all that different in color, the pillars in the background and the Silent King up front, as well as his two minions. But for the purposes of this model, I would like to actually bring a little bit more attention to the Silent King who is standing in the middle and have a just comparison between the two, let the person looking at it be able to see that. So for that reason, we're gonna have these be a little warmer, we're gonna have him be a little colder. And for that, we're gonna need to go ahead and layer in some warmer colors. So over our Rhinox hide, we're gonna go ahead and put in our Morphing Brown mix with our Mephestin Red. And now I'm gonna go ahead and shake these up and get them on the palette. So taking our brush here, get some of this Mornfang, put that right on our palette. So two brushes of that. I'm gonna wipe my brush out in between here so it's nice and clean. Gonna clear off my space. And oh, 
That red does need to be shook, so I'm going to shake the red real quick. This is again Mephestin. This is probably my favorite red. It is a little bright for this application, but because it is going literally into a brown, so it's going to desaturate quite a bit right off the bat. So I'm not too terribly worried about it. And if I started off with like kind of a darker red, like maybe a chaos red, that would probably lose too much of its oomph. And so we're going to mix this together and see where we're at. You know, I don't mind this, but I think I'm going to put one more brush of Mornfing in. This is just being done by eye. <clears throat> Another color you could use is something like a Vallejo Saddle Leather. That is a kind of red brown that would accomplish a very similar thing. All right, here we go. So I just didn't want it to be too red. I just wanted a warm brown. And that's what we have here, mixed with about a brush, a uh, half a brush or so of water. This brush is, is surprisingly large uh, for what it looks like it is. It has a lot of, it's kind of poofy, even though it's not very big. So it has a lot of space and it grabs a lot of water. It's capable of holding quite a bit. And because of the capillary action, it just grabs it as soon as you touch the surface of the water. But I think we're ready to get going. So I'm gonna pull this in. This is not a base coat here. So we are gonna be dry brushing this on. Um, and we're gonna cover quite a bit of this, but not all of it. So as a dry brush, I'm gonna get rid of quite a bit of it. I'm gonna test it here on the back of my thumb. I can see here those brush strokes very clearly. So I know I've still got a bit too much in. All right, now the brush strokes have disappeared. And now we're good. So I'm going to start on the bottom areas here, just in case this doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. That way I have some recourse. Ah, yes. And so that actually looks quite good. So I'm very happy with that color. So we're going to come in here and we're going to apply this all around. So this is just going to be building up this color to add some warmth to the places that we want warmth. I'm going to try and stick uh, mostly to the tops of these pieces, but I am going to be building this color up. Yeah, I really like that. That's going to be a nice warm brass color when we're done with it as a non-metallic. Still being very careful here not to get this paint on to the cold looking throne because that is going to um, mess up what we're going for here. All right, that's looking good. So you can see in some places, like the very top of this, this tends to coalesce a bit more here. I am gonna just work that so that it blends a little better while still leaving quite a bit. And so now you have a good comparison between these two. You can see this portion here that is this now kind of redder, warmer color but still darker in the recesses. I am gonna come down and highlight that though, cause that's visible. Yeah. And now we're gonna come and do the exact same thing to the next one. I'm gonna pick up a little more of this paint. I'm gonna come through. I'm gonna get most of it out. I'm gonna check my thumb. I can still see those brush strokes. And again, now I can't, which is great. So I'm gonna pull this back in the frame. There we go. And now we're just dry brushing in. This is mostly hitting the top areas here, but still I am gonna go, uh, I am gonna go all the way down. I just wanna concentrate it at the top. And so this is how we can control what, what kind of color, like what kind of warmth a piece has by putting in warmer undertones and then putting some brighter colors on top, you're still gonna be aware of those colors underneath. And that's really gonna set the foundation for what you can see here. Get rid of that, there we go. And yeah, just this piece really has some really beautiful ridges here that are in just all the right places. And it really nicely picks this color up and ends up putting it where I want it. So. You definitely always want to lean into the model here, not be fighting the model for sure. 
still being very careful as I go down. I don't want to get this color onto my lightning. That would be bad because lightning is not a rust color generally. Maybe some very, very special chaotic lightning is that color. Get it in. Check. A little more. There we go. Coming in here. Get this down. This is important too to make sure my brush strokes do follow um, a starting at the top going to the bottom kind of motion. And you can see we actually do have a little bit of stuff here. I'm not too worried about that little bit of white that's down there. It is going to, these areas here will also receive a glow effect as well. So that little bit is not going to be a problem. I would be worried if there were a lot of it, because then it would possibly cause some problems. But as is, uh, that is that is totally fine. That was a little strong right there, so I will have to sit and blend. Get some more of that out. Yep. But that's the thing. Once when you're doing this kind of blending, get you back in the frame here. When you're doing this kind of blending, you really just have to sit and just work it until it kind of creates a smooth transition. Um, if you do it too long, you will start to see tearing, like we did, I think, in episode two. But the solution to that is just a little bit more moisture here and a little bit less pushing, a little bit less uh, hard, hard painting. Yeah, you can see that looks really good. It really warms this whole thing up. It went from being very neutral, maybe slightly warm, to now being actually very warm. And so I'm actually going to grab a little more paint. So this is where a little bit too much paint got on there. And so I do need to come in here and just smooth that transition. And I can still see the colors underneath, which is important. But at the same time, yeah, so now that makes a much smoother transition there, much more believable as metal. <clears throat> it is hard to know. Sometimes the reason things don't quite look right is that they have not enough paint. Sometimes they have too much paint. Generally though, uh, unless you're looking at the kind of MIM where you have the Space Marine that has the super crazy eyeballs. I'm sure everyone's seen that one where someone went in uh, with a gigantic brush and just popped some eyes onto a Space Marine. Unless we're dealing with something like that, for the most part, as long as you keep your layers thin, you can usually solve your problems by continuing to add more layers, not covering up, but working through what's underneath. And oftentimes that'll kind of get you where you want to go. There's some really, really good creators out there on YouTube. I don't know about Twitch. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else on Twitch. I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't noticed them. But there's some really good creators out there who if you just look around on YouTube, you'll find who are excellent at explaining uh, what what you really need to do to get some excellent layers here. And hopefully, I'm adding just a little bit to that. Not that I am an expert at this at all, but I have been painting for a while. Again, we're just building up this color here, real slow. Just like everything else here. It's all about having enough patience to let the model do the work and not be loading up your brush with too much paint and then trying to force something on the model it doesn't want. And you can still see again really well here the difference between this warmer color now that has these reds in it and this kind of neutral, uh, very dull brown color. And on the palette cam, you can definitely see here, uh, maybe less on the palette cam, maybe more so there's got a sheen on it there. But just on the left side, or the right side of the screen, you should be able to see uh, how this, this color is really kind of a, a very pleasing kind of red-brown color, leather color. And other than the water that I added right at the beginning to get this, this whole process started, I really have not had to add more water to this paint right here. This paint is done uh, really well, which generally is the case with um, 
these browns and reds by Citadel, I have generally found that uh, even working on a dry palette, I don't have to add a ton of water to them. Especially when dry brushing like this, you definitely know. But even when I'm actually doing, they thin just with a very small amount of water, which is excellent. All right. And we're almost done with this bottom section here. You can see I'm being careful not to get this on the stairs. I'm making sure to pull it mostly towards the top. Sometimes you are seeing me come to the bottom. It's because I'm trying to put an, almost an edge highlight of sorts on this. Uh, and it even kind of works uh, <laughs> by pulling the bristles across these edges. Get down here now. Most people will never see this. It's under the stairs, but um, I'm the kind of person that tends to paint like the inside of rhinos and stuff. And so I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me because I know it's there and it makes me happy. And that's how you should do as well. Find the parts of the hobby that make you happy and work on those. Be a little less worried about what the other people will say or think or feel whenever they see your models. Alrighty. Oh, we can see there's a little mistake right here too. I'm not sure when that happened. I could have been any time while I was working on these uh, these OSL effects. Again, I chose not to hold the model with a plinth. Uh, it is huge. I do have a huge plinth. It would have gone on, but it is much more difficult uh, to control it. Each of these little bits in space tend to move. You can see the stairs. The stairs are being held on by this one little tiny joint down here. Um, <laughs> and so that they haven't broken yet is kind of a miracle, honestly. Uh, I am going to come in here. Whoa finger cut this other water here that's okay no harm done I'm gonna go ahead and wash my brush out it was getting a little dry you can hear it uh, on this palette that's covered with tin foil and so you can definitely see uh, and hear that it's a little dry but I'm gonna add some water in just from there and then I'm gonna come in and add it around and I'm gonna get it out again that way we don't have too much on there and since I've done that I'm gonna test it on my thumb and I do not see any brush strokes, and that's great. So the same color, so we're done kind of with this bottom piece here. Uh, I might come and touch just a little bit around, but for the most part, I think fussing with this uh, can only make it worse. So, because we're gonna be adding a lot more layers. This is just one of many, because we'll need to build this up to be a brass color, and we're definitely not anywhere close. But these other accents here, the area of this rail, right here and this piece both of these are also this brass color and so we're gonna very gently kind of apply it and you can see it just comes to life almost immediately when I do this really nice we're being careful not to get this color on the rest of the rail here and we're gonna concentrate this kind of at the top get some more paint in there again because it's got more water in it. I definitely want to come back over and test yep I don't see anything there so we're gonna do that and apply one more here it's a very small area and it's really really close to kind of everything else so I'm being real careful with it All right, and so actually I'm looking right here and right here, and it looks like right here, I forgot to put that original color down. So I will come back to that in just a moment to fix that. That definitely happens sometimes, you're moving around. I am gonna finish what I have over here first, and then I'll come back to this. This way I don't have to clean out the brush so many times. But I have uh, pretty clearly missed that, so I'm not gonna dry brush that, but I'll come back in that in a moment. So these big uprights, on these bottom ones, it was important to make sure I went from top to bottom and I made sure to concentrate the color where I wanted it, namely where it would make the most sense for it to be brighter later on. And so these outer edges here, not on the inside, but on the outside and on the tops, that makes the most sense because that's where you're gonna need to start building the colors and this is a brighter color. These, it's really important. It's also very important we keep the brush going the same direction 
because you can see on there maybe, just maybe the camera can do it, that there are some brush strokes in that. And so that just is gonna happen with a brush like this. You can be a little careful, a little more careful with a nicer brush, but I still wanna go through with this brush and I wanna maintain the same direction. Otherwise, we're gonna see a kind of weird crisscross hatchy pattern on here, and that's not what I want. So during that explanation, the brush did dry out, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that here. I will need more paint on my palette, so I'm gonna go ahead and do what I did last time. And that's where I'm gonna take three brushfuls of Mornfang, and then I'm going to add an additional brushful here of our Mephestin. So that's three to one here for this particular color. Go ahead and wash my brush out in between. That way I don't end up uh, moving uh, desaturated brown into my red. That would be bad. I want to keep this red a nice bright red color. Now I'm going to come in here, grab some of my Mephestin, and let's see where that takes us. I'm going to grab just a hint of water here to go in here. I'm leaving the original paint back here on this other side. I'm not swirling this around the whole thing so I can get another uh, check on whether or not I'm matching the colors. It would be okay if this paint were slightly brighter since it is higher up on the model. But for consistency here, I'm gonna try and keep my mixes the same. And I can see these two places here are exactly the same color. So that is great. So now I just have more paint to work with. I'm going to work that out, wipe this off, <clears throat> Oftentimes when I'm mixing, I will use another brush that's just for mixing on here so I'm not you know, getting paint all the way down into the ferrules of my brush that I'm painting with, uh, or my nice brushes. But in this case, uh, this brush, well, could always be worse, <laughs> is definitely already worse for wear here. So let's go ahead and try and shape that as we can. The residual moisture in the brush from washing should be enough here. So let's see what we got. All right. And we're going to wipe that all out here. We're going to test it on the thumb again to see if I can see brush strokes. I can. Get a little more out. All right. Now we're good to go. Again, starting from the top, working our way to the bottom, keeping the direction of the brush top to bottom. And then after we see where that piles, we'll be able to pull it partially to the side here to get it to stick to this ridge, which is what I want. And then I can see how much of that I have. Then I can come back down and continue to smooth it. So let's grab some more. And because this is a much larger piece, a much larger area, it might be that for this, I want to do a little stippling. It might be that I want to add a little bit of texture to these for visual interest. So we're going to pull this down in this way. We're gonna concentrate this color more, mostly towards the outside because that's where we're gonna be building up our lighter colors later on. And this is an additional foundation for those brighter colors as we go. Just lending it some warmth because this has got that red mixed in. And it makes this really, really nice uh, warm brown color. That's a great base for brass. It's a great base for things like copper but this is gonna be kind of a warm brass, I feel. Not a copper, copper is gonna be a little too um, not regal enough for the Silent King. And then we're gonna hit these areas down here at the bottom as well as this. But we're gonna leave quite a bit of this here um, in, in this darker color. And we're gonna concentrate a little more here at the top. So we're gonna get that out there. I'm gonna pull that down as well leaving just a tad so we can still see through this color I don't want to obliterate everything I already did because we spent some time getting those nice base coats in all right taking care of this ridge there is a space in here too that I'm gonna grab it's a little weird to get to it's a little hard to show you on camera so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it like that because that's on the interior same thing for that. Let's see if I can get in there. You can see that. Yeah, you kind of can. Having to reach into some strange spaces. I think you could make an argument for this model to paint it uh, in paces. But I think that would be a little harder to visualize for some people. 
I think when you are going through and putting your lighting effects in and trying to decide like where the light is coming from, doing a model in pieces may make it easier for you to reach, but it will make it more difficult for you to visualize where those lights are going to be on it, especially if we're talking about just top-down lights. Um, that way you would have to always hold your pieces and think through it. This makes it just a little bit easier because I have the whole rest of the model here uh, guiding me a bit, letting me remind myself where the light's going to come from. And it builds up really, really nice is around really, really nice around these ridges. Again, that's the GW model was made by someone with the the idea that you would be painting it. So that's why for especially models like this that are well designed, and they're not the only company that has well designed models, they're just happen to be the one I'm working on right now. We definitely want to let the model do as much work as we can. We don't want to take any work away from the model that the model is willing to do. Uh, we should have enough of that ourselves. And I got just a little bit there. Oftentimes you can just peel that right off with your fingernail. Yeah, there we go. I didn't get it all, but I got enough and I don't think that'll be noticeable anymore. And even if it is, I can come back a little later and clean it up. So, there's no mistake that we can't fix. All right, and so that looks quite nice. Just dry brushed on, All right, get you back in the middle of the frame, get you back in focus. The light's kind of helping. The camera is kind of, kind of confused, I think. But you can see here that that just that really did nice leaving a good bit behind while still putting enough to give you that visual interest there. And I'm going to come back around and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So we have this one and in this case we have this OSL effect that we're going to try and avoid for the most part. I am going to come back and work on that but in this case I am going to start, mm, let's see, let's think about what would be the best way to do this. Probably this direction still and then I'll turn the model in just a moment. So this is the main big pillar here. It might be tempting <coughs> to start on something like the big pillar, but if you're not entirely positive that the technique you're using is going to, to be exactly what you want, you definitely want to start where we started, on the bottom, someplace that's a little less noticeable and a little more easily fixed. So that if you do end up having to come back and you do end up having to change something, you aren't doing it right in the middle of your model. So just something to consider and think through whenever you start painting, especially if you're using a technique that you're not familiar with, you should definitely be curious and go and explore new techniques, but start them someplace that if you had to change it or you had to fix it, it would make your life a little easier. So you kind of want uh, present you to be looking out for future you in case present you uh, has a crazy moment and makes a mistake. All right, I have this nice color coming right down from there. It's one of the really great things about dry brushing is that while you do have to think about where your paint is going, uh, Again, the model is doing so much of the work here. And I'm going to avoid putting this color too close to this OSL effect. And that's because the darker it is directly next to where the glow is going to be, the brighter the glow will appear to be. And so that's that juxtaposition of light and dark. You definitely want to consider that when you're looking at doing not just lighting effects, but also any of the colors on your model. Things will appear, by comparison, brighter whenever you put them next to things that are darker. So we're just being really careful here. I want to pick up this ridge without touching the OSL effect or this, this little uh, support. Excellent. And so now you can see we have a really nice effect on here. It's really starting to come together with these colors that we're adding. And because you can now see kind of the whole effect here, and this one is undone on this side. Let me get you in frame here. Yeah. So that's going to be really nice. It's really going to <clears throat> create a contrast between the Silent King 
who should be cold, kind of a cold gold color, and these parts of the throne, which are going to have a little more warmth to them. Get you back in frame. Going to take care of this ridge here. Again, trying to keep my brush strokes the same direction. I'm going to come on top here and get this piece. You can see there where I did the repair last time, that does have a few coats on it, but unlike the rest of the model, that was coated in black. That piece right there uh, has this the raw model under it. So it didn't clean up quite as well as one would hope, but that is okay because there's going to be that's going to be one of the brightest spots on the model. And so it's going to have quite a few additional layers on it. And we can even see if we look closely, we can see right here there is a mold line there. But at this point, uh, that is what it is. It's just worth noting, <clears throat> even if you're not going to fix the errors that you, you end up seeing on a model, if you know that it's something that you wanted to improve, you should always note it. It's worth it to call a sin a sin. So to say, OK, I did mess up. I'm just going to note again that that's where a mold line could form. And it could be that I actually had to build this. It's been so long since I put this model together, which is another kind of downside for having a large pile of shame, is you sometimes forget like where exactly the problem areas on a model might be. And you got that idea when you put them together, but by the time you got around to painting it, you forgot. And so this paint is actually starting to dry out here on the palette, and I do need more of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. We're going to grab some more of our Mornfing Brown. I have two pillars left. This actually just did one and a half pillars, essentially. So I'm going to shake this up. I can see it separating just a tad. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I'm going to grab three to one. One, two, three. So I got three Mornfing Brown. I'm going to wipe my brush out in between because I don't want to contaminate my red. And let's see, it's probably about time to switch over so you can see this one, that's that's pretty, pretty grody in there. So having a couple of different bottles of water here for you to just switch between real quick is pretty nice. I'll leave it there in case I have uh, quite a bit. But this dirty water actually acts like a wash almost. <clears throat> and it goes in to the ferrule of your brush. And when it dries, it expands. And it causes the brush, 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 brush bristles to expand out. <clears throat> and then they no longer hold their nice shape. So whenever you can, you definitely want to prevent paint from getting inside your brush. Especially if it's one you care anything about. And this three to one right here is still working well for us. I'm leaving the edge over here so I can do a comparison in just a moment. But it looks like we're coming right along, keeping this color very consistent with that three to one mix. Now, if you had a bunch of models to do and you were going to continue this theme exactly as is and you wanted it to have a really high degree of consistency, you would be writing this down. There is no shame in writing down your recipes. In fact, I have a whole list on my phone of the armies that I have and the armies that I've had, the commissions that I've done, and they have the recipes for the various colors, uh, both the brand and the color and the ratio on there so that I can reproduce exactly a color. So if someone I did a commission for last year says, you know, I really appreciate you painting those Dracari for me, they looked really good, but here's some more racks. I want them to be painted just like the other. Well, it's been a year and there is no way I would remember exactly what I had done to get that color. So it's always good if you plan on coming back to it or if you just want to build the habit of writing down the colors that you use making sure that you have access to that knowledge in the future, especially if you're not just pulling it out of a, a bottle. But even then, maybe it's worth it. Maybe you'll want to have access to that again. And since it is a custom thing, it's not going to be anywhere but in your head or wherever you wrote it. So generally, I feel worth it to write down your recipes. And I like to keep it just in like Samsung Notes. Oops. 
That was a little weird. We're going to pull this paint. We really got to mix that in right there because there was quite a bit uh, hiding in the brush somewhere. It's kind of interesting. But we're going to just smooth that in. My thumb's really close because I'm going to have to work pretty quick to kind of smooth this across. But as you can see, it's working its way in. It's becoming blended pretty well. Even though that was a little scary for just a moment, it's okay. Generally, you just want to keep going, especially while the paint is wet. Uh, while it's wet, there's pretty much nothing you can't do. Once it dries, now our options become a little more limited. And same thing here. I have this, this ball here that's going to be green in a while. And I have this strut that I do not want to hit. So I'm just going to work for a second in between the two. And I'm going to come below it, grab just a tad more paint, get all that out. Oh, oh I see what's happening. So this is where my paper here has become inundated. And there's too much water there. So I will address that in just a moment. But again, before this dries, I have to come in here and I need to work this. So I'm trying to leave a darker area around this ball, again, to enhance my glow effect when it's time to do that. And you can see here, just by working this paint around, making sure it didn't dry in that strange pattern, I was able to save this area too and not really have to do anything. And again, it looked pretty good. We're just going to make sure that we get this brass color here along this edge because this is going to be, again, one of the brightest parts of the model right here. And going from side to side, so I am going to strengthen this color on this side, just looking at the two. This happened on the other side partially as a mistake, but ultimately uh, that kind of showed me that I do want additional color there. I'm just going to wipe that out and just strengthen this color just a little bit. Let me get you back in frame. Strengthen this color here just a little bit. I don't think I ever really appreciated how difficult it was for the painters to keep everything in frame and in focus in their videos. It is definitely a challenge. Even with these Brio cameras, uh, they tend to lose focus, they tend to do some weird stuff. And it's just difficult to keep painting. Uh, in the same little space in the air right in front of the camera so it is interesting and now that this is dried down here from the too moist paint I can come down and strengthen it up a little bit too but there we are you can see it's a little darker around that and that's really gonna make that glow effect pop in a moment all right one left so this should be enough paint I am spreading it kind of thin on this palette generally you don't want to do that you want to keep your stuff kind of close uh, on this though, uh, it's just kind of happening today. This is a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. But you definitely want to keep your paint a little closer together with itself. It will last longer on your palette and it won't dry out quite as quick. But I do recognize that that can be a little difficult to do. Especially uh, when you're not <clears throat> uh, very specifically trying to do it. The natural tendency is to kind of pull it all around. Let's get this back in the center and keep working it here. I'm going to pull this from here. I'm going to pull across this ridge and then I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to take it nice and slow around this bottom portion here. There's a lot going on down here. I definitely want to keep that center over there black. That was too much paint removed. <laughs> if you touch the place on, on your paper here that's wet, uh, it'll move a ton of paint. And so something to be careful of. So I'm going to come in here. And we're just working around those edges. I definitely want this in the smooth flat spots too, but I want to focus it in the spots that are either raised or that are edges. Because that's definitely where we're going to be building up a greater amount of brighter colors later. And so when we do do the Silent King and his minions, we will be 
doing a very similar thing, except instead of going with this very kind of warm red color, we will end up using a lot more cool colors, still building up our uh, brightness to brighter colors, but really focusing in on the less reds, more blues and purples, maybe some greens. And so making that gold very, we gotta be careful with green because green uh, is like verdigris. It'll read as copper if we're not careful. But gold definitely can have blues and greens in it too. So just with, you know, the proper amounts. But we'll definitely focus in on those nice cool colors for him. But you can see the red really coming out for this. I'm definitely here for this color here. And as we slowly layer it in, also worth noting there's some water here in those little areas of my palette, which I'll clean up in just a moment here. Get a little more color on there. There we are. Yep. It's drying out pretty fast. I'm going to grab just a little bit of water and come in here, kind of bring this back to life for the last little run. Last little run here. I'm going to get most of that out. I'm going to grab some now. Come back in. Go check my thumb because I added water here. Nope. Way too much. There we go. And back in we go. I'm going to move this over so you're back in frame, back in focus. Or at least have a chance. Grab some more paint. Get some more out. Come back to the model. And we're down here where this ridge is at, and I definitely want this ridge highlighted, but I do not want to get paint either in this crevice or on my strut. But I do want it to be built up all the way around, and on this little lip down here, light will actually collect here on the model. So we'll want to make sure we want to avoid the top area of this arch and the, hit the bottom area of this arch. And so that's where we're definitely going to see some light uh, as if coming from the top. All right, I'll do that. I'm actually going to go, and I've realized I didn't hit the bottoms of these. And I don't want to hit it a lot because I do want that to be a dark color, but I definitely want it to be some. So we're going to come in. There we are. And then this, the bottom of this one is hidden, which is fine. All right, so what have we got? I'm going to strengthen the color here along the back ridge because this is going to be one of the brightest areas of the model. Being very careful not to get this color someplace I don't want. I do want to strengthen it just a little bit right here at the bottom. Not a ton, but just a little bit. I'm going to work this in and around. Oh. And we'll just have some spots here that are just a little more, especially around any kind of holes that may have some deformations. And so like this right here has a little deformation probably around it. And there's definitely a little deformation here. And so we'll just get right around there. And then this area right here has a little more. So we're going to build it up just there. And here we are. <clears throat> so let's take another look around. I'm going to wash my brush out real quick using the really dirty water to start. And then I'll move to my cleaner water. All right, let's move these pieces off of our paper. And let's take a look. So this color is basically done. We're going to come in here, look and see. We're going to fix anything right now that looks like it needs fixing. And this is the moment that I am going to come back to this other piece. This is the one of the darker areas, so I'm not going to bother putting too much more color there. Check the bottoms of these. Make sure there is some, but not a ton, because it is going to be darker down there. Let's check the tops. Yeah, that looks like I hit all of that. So. Right now I'm going to come back and repair this because I noticed it. And before we go too far down, 
uh, especially once before we get to the lighting effects for sure, we're going to want to fix that. So let's get our Rhinox hide here. Let's see where it's made its way to. Here we are. All right. So here's the Rhinox hide that we use as a base. Go ahead and shake that a bit. Just going to get a very small amount here on my palette. Uh, that's dry. That is dry. All right. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to touch just a tiny bit of water. And let's grab that right there. And we're basically going to stipple this in so you'll get to see what we did the last time too. So I'm going to come here with the piece and I'm going to stipple that on. So kind of a hybrid stipple motion here. Just trying to get it right where I want it and nowhere that I don't because I want this line to be very, very sharp. And you can see it already has a little bit of a highlight to it because of all that dry brushing we did before definitely don't want to destroy that so here and I'm letting the model do the work I'm letting this ridge stop my brush so that it doesn't work its way up onto the top of this pillar because that would be bad yep, you can see I just push it right in there yep and then let's clean up any other spots I think that might be it In another world, you probably could do some work on these. These pipes could be this brass color, they could be something else. But we're going to keep that pretty simple here. Uh, I can't actually go over these ridges and hit these lines very easily. So, <coughs> because of the restriction with the brush, I am going to make sure that I am uh, kind of not overstepping what I can do. Got to keep it reasonable. All right get all of that out so now that I've got that on there once this dries I will come back with my other color and then we'll go on to it but for now let's go ahead and move on to our next color and we're not going to go too fast too quick but now we're going to work with something with a little bit of yellow in it and so for that we're going to start with some AP Basculus Brown so that's going to be what we start with here And I do not believe we're going to do too much adulteration of this other than to add some of our other mix into it. So get some of that onto our palette. And we might have to end up making a little more of this. We'll end up doing that anyways because of the part I forgot. But for now, we'll grab that in here and we'll just pull it in. And so this is just to create some nice smooth transitions. This is more of like a mustard color, but it is going to grab some of the reds here. Yeah, there we go. Just mixing in some of that stuff that we got there. But it's definitely got yellows. And that yellow is going to help us transition in the end to that kind of brassy color that we're going to end with. And we are going to have a pretty bright yellow in the end. We're probably going to use something like uh, Phoenix Flames into Flash Glitz. So we have at least two more of these layers before we're done. And again, this is just adding more visual depth to the model. The more layers we add, the more visual interest, to a point, you can't overdo it, but the more visual interest the model will have because it's going to have uh, a lot more depth as it travels, as the eye travels through all the different colors that you're setting up. All right, now the brush is cleaned out. Still looking okay. Not great, <laughs> and definitely is a little worse for the wear here, but. Uh, because of the way I dry it off each time, we are keeping a fairly nice point on it. So when we end up having the stipple later, uh, especially at the very end, when we're working with these very bright colors just around the tops, uh, we'll still be able to do that without accidentally hitting too many places. But very similar process here now. We're going to take this color, the uh, Basculus Brown that we've mixed in with a little bit of our 3 to 1 uh, Mourn Pink Brown and Mephestin Brown. And we're going to keep going. So we're going to grab some of this up. That's a nice kind of Dijon mustard color. It definitely has the yellows in, moving us towards that brighter color in the end. And I'm going to start this color, in case I want to make any changes, I'm going to start this color kind of towards the bottom here on these. So let's go ahead, 
cool that. Now let's take a look. That's just a little bit here. Let's brighten it up just a tad, getting us towards where we want to go. So right now, this is definitely tending towards Copper Penny, like old Copper Penny. And that's fine, because that when we put the yellow on top, it's going to move it back into brass territory. But this is absolutely fine right now. With those warm colors under, yeah. And so we're going to focus this on mostly the top areas to really start building up the areas that we want to see the brightest. So in some cases like this, I'm going to completely avoid the other side back there. So instead of going all the way in, we'll just stick to this front kind of area around these pieces as we build up this kind of penny color, which again is a really nice coppery kind of color. And brass has copper in it, so this makes sense. And we're just going to come around and do the same to all of that there. Not totally obliterating this other color. It's really important that you don't uh, go too ham here. We do want to leave some of that there, so I'm just going to focus on this front side of each one. And I'm not going to go inside over there either. We'll do this one as well. Grab some more paint, come in, pull it only in the brightest areas. So that area is kind of hidden and I'm going to bonk the camera there just for good luck. Would not be a stream with me without at least one or two bonks in there. And let's get us back into frame. It's always nice to be in frame. All right. And we're going to pull this color in, pull it down. Yep, same here. Yeah, that's very nice. Just focusing mostly on this upper section of the model to get that nice brass effect here. Or ni it's nice copper effect, I should say. This is definitely in the realm of Copper Penny now. And so that is definitely what we're aiming for as a transitional um, color for this. And what really helps sell it is those darker red colors underneath. This would look very different if it had, uh, say, cold colors under it. It would no longer look really like old copper. It would start to have probably still a, a metallic look to it, but definitely not the warmth that copper should have. And we're focusing again mostly on this front area of these, leaving some of this red. So that red right there is perfect. I definitely want to not obliterate that. Leave the darker areas here too, while still building up enough to make this believable. Same thing there. Going to build up some of that. And anywhere I feel like should have just a little more, especially along these bottom pieces here. Remember, light coming from the top down is going to pool in a way. Now I call it pooling, but you're going to see it on these bottom ridges and not on these top ridges. So again, that's why direction is so important whenever you're doing something like this and building up those brighter colors. Same thing here. Start from the top, work our way down, doing our best not to obliterate these other colors that we've worked so hard to put on. Got a lot of this nice red on this one, which we're going to try and keep. <clears throat> Pardon me. When I'm done with this bottom section, I am going to get a little bit of my tactical latte over there. Yep, same thing here. You can see it go on pretty well. And then the smooth down. I'm going to keep to this side of it. And I'm going to leave this other side pretty well and untouched. And then here is this side of this one. So I'm going to pull in here. I'm going to make sure I grab this ridge so it pops out. Nice. All right. And while I'm here, I'm going to grab those bits. Yep. Here it is. Yep. Really starting to see these little bits pop out. Yep. Let's see if I can't rectify that. There we go. 
especially on this top area here. I'm gonna get in there, and I think this is a, a job for Nullin oil down in there. I can't really get in there and uh, fix that with this kind of brush. There's just no way. It doesn't have the the precision to be able to get down in there. Uh, now this is the section. Whoop, this is the section that I messed up on and I forgot to do. So I'm gonna wash my brush out and I'm gonna apply the previous step to it now. And luckily, I left just a tad of my other color here. And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna stipple this on. You can immediately see the difference. All that red comes in. All right. So there we go. That didn't take much at all. No reason to overdo. And that's gonna dry very, very quickly too because there's just so little paint. Get my brush out. As I'm wiping this brush out, you can see I'm turning it. I think the, uh, the pattern here, the zebra pattern, really helps to show that off. You can see I'm turning it always on the thing. All right, now oh, we do have a few people here in the chat. All right. So yeah, I'm always trying to keep this shape to my brush. I do want it to be pointy. All right, that's pretty dry right there, so I am gonna grab this penny color. And let's just get that on there too. Don't want to go too crazy. So just that little bit there, and that'll be enough. All right, and now that area is fixed from where I forgot. Go ahead and wipe this out, because that was such a little amount of paint, and it's going to dry in there. I'm going to grab a sip of my tactical latte. Uh, if you were painting something that required more precision, more accuracy, you probably would not be drinking coffee. Um, it will give your hand a little bit of a shake and make it quite a bit more difficult for you to be able to get your brush in those small areas. All right. So let's take a look at our work. Always looking, it's kind of like tasting the soup. You're always looking at what you've already done, making sure what you're doing is matching it, especially if it's supposed to be the same thing. But yeah, just a really nice old copper color right there. This would, if you wanted to take some verdigris, if you wanted to take something like, say, <clears throat> a mixture of maybe Royal Cloak from Army Painter or Goblin Green with Wizard Orb, with all of these, you put these together and you got a nice blue-green color, layered those in, you would really, I think, sell the verdigris, the copper color there. You could also use Lothrian Blue. It's a layer paint by uh, GW here. What else do we have? Just looking through. Um, we have, I don't think I have a Viejo in those kind of colors. Um, there's a P3 paint over there that's that color. It's turned around and I can't quite reach it, but definitely every color, every paint line is going to have something for that, some kind of blue that's really going to work. Even things like Kimura that have very few paints, you'll still be able to mix your way to get those greens and blues. All right, well, let's continue on. This all looks good to me. So what's left here on this for these bits are these big uprights. And we're just gonna check this paint and it appears to be doing, yeah, okay. This particular mixture of paint uh, was a little better than the last. So we're gonna start on this side this time and just work our way over this nice copper color, this nice penny color. This is one of those colors here that uh, this mixture I'm actually really happy with. It's something that I will write down, in fact, when I'm looking. So I've done copper a variety of different ways, and this is one that I really like. And so uh, when I'm done, I will actually take a moment and write this all down for myself. That way I'll have it uh, the next time I want this particular effect. Well, let's get you back in frame. There's a tendency for me to lift it above where the camera's at, so I'm not looking through the camera, gan camera gantry. Maybe in the future, uh, that is uh, something to aspire to fix. <laughs> that would be the, the good coaching, right? Fixing the reason why I want to do something that's not particularly good for the stream. 
to give myself a better chance of doing it right. Most of the time, people don't need very much inspiration one way or the other. Just a little push, and that's the direction they go. So why not use that to your advantage? Make it easy for yourself to do the right thing. Again, I'm focusing this kind of at this bottom portion here. I don't want to go all the way in here because it's going to be a little, little darker. Right here is okay though, but this area, that's where I really want that light to end up. And I think that's really going to help sell the effect. <clears throat> Same thing over here. I'm going to start at the top and work our way down, working this really kind of beautiful old penny color in with those reds underneath. It really comes out nice. Sticking to the edge there and the edge here. Gonna get a little more paint. So I will have to mix up some more of this paint. This one's gonna be a little tricky because I had grabbed some of the paint that was over there to make it work. So when I mix this up, I also have to mix that up. So this is why if you couldn't remember the ratios that you used, this would be where you would want to have written it down already. If I really had to, I could look at the film, uh, but luckily, I do remember how I put it together. And I'll mention that momentarily when I mix it. I'm going to focus right down here at the bottom here where that would have grabbed. With a nicer brush, you really could help to focus that in a little better. But as is, that is totally fine. And I'm going to work on this ridge too. I'm going to make sure this ridge has some nice, strong copper. Because again, these ridges are going to be some of the brightest portions of the model. And right in there too. I'm not going to go up, but that little section right there could easily escape you. But it is facing almost directly up with very little overhang. And we're going to have that be copper as well. So we can see pretty easily here the copper versus not copper. Now let's mix up some more. And so in between doing this, I am just going to wipe everything out so I don't have any issues with my brushes. Now our previous mix was three to one, Mornfang Brown. So I'm going to get three small brushes this time. One, two, three. And I'm going to wipe my brush out, wash it out really well. Again, this is some pretty dirty water over here. When you're doing this, you should probably have a couple of more uh, bottles of water, not bottles, what are these? A couple more cups of water handy. Uh, or just bigger ones, you know. The, solu the solution to pollution is dilution. So if you've got more water, it'll take a little bit longer to get really dirty. But keeping your nice brushes cleaned out is definitely the way to go. And that starts with clean water. So I'm gonna mix all of this in over here so I can have this paint to mix with. Grab that up. <clears throat> and now this, if I'm looking at it, is just a little more red than before. So I'm going to grab just a little bit more of my Mornfang and add just about a half a brush full into this just to bring it back down. This is just going to be the stuff I mix with, but it's going to go into my Basculus Brown. So I do want it to be as close to the original as possible. All right, and now we're gonna bring some more Basculus Brown on this kind of nice lighter mustard color. You can see how bright that is there. And our next step is actually gonna be to grab that and then we're gonna move up from there. But we're gonna pull this in and we're gonna pull in this color until it matches. There we go, and we're basically there, a little more. Yep, mixing your paints on your palette is one of those things that you'll really have to practice. It's something that it does take some time to build up the skill on, but it's definitely worth it. The better you are at mixing paints on your palette, the less paints you'll really need to own. You'll still need to own white and black, because those aren't actually colors, they're shades. But most of the other colors, as long as they aren't, they don't contain something strange. Sometimes things contain metal, sometimes they contain 
um, fluorescent dyes. Something like Tezzeret Glow is a good example of this. It's something you couldn't mix up on your own unless you have like a highlighter that you're willing to sacrifice. But most of the time, if they're just colors, you should be able to mix them yourself. And definitely some teals and other things are really difficult to do, but you still could. But just these kind of things where you're trying to build up these different metals, really good to practice doing it yourself and then you can have less paints. When people come to the store and they ask me kind of what paints they should buy to get started, I usually tell them it really depends on what you're trying to paint. You really don't want a bunch of paint that you're not going to use. So buying a huge 150 piece paint set, like all of the AP line or something, or you know 250 paints, like trying to get all the Citadel line, you just don't need to do it. Uh, there's going to be tons and tons of paints you don't use. And all of those paints you don't use, are going to detract from the savings that you get from buying a big selection of paints. You could say, well, I might use them one day. And that's true, but paints do have a shelf life. If they sit too long, well, then they've gone bad. So just something to think about. Whenever you're buying your paints, uh, even as a store owner here, I recommend that you really try to get the paints that you need for your project and not try and speculate too much on what paints you're going to need in the future. And you can see that took a little while. I was talking, but you can see that I had to sit there, remix all of that. And so it's worth it though, because now this perfectly matches the other paint. So it was worth the time. And so there's too much water right there. What I'm going to do, I can see this area is kind of inundated with water. I'm actually going to flip this which is fine. You can keep getting use out of your paper here. So now this is the area with some paint on it, but now this is a nice dry area and I can get my brush nice and ready here. There we go. So let's get this back into frame. Here we are. And we're just going to start at the top and work our way down with brush strokes starting from the top and moving to the bottom. And this little area right here I'm going to do right now. And I don't want to go in here because this actually has a little overhang. And I do not want that uh, copper penny color to be under the overhang. I want that to appear dark. I want it to still have that red appearance. All right, I do want to smooth this out here. A little bit too much paint got in and we're moving towards kind of the end of our paints here. I want to be very careful at this point not to put any brush strokes in this because my opportunities to fix them are starting to go down. I am starting to have less opportunity to really fix these uh, mistakes if I make them. So I want to mitigate as much as I can. Again, I'm focusing here in these areas that have this damage. There's not a ton of damage to this thing, but you know, it is in a war zone most of the time. So it makes sense. Got a little bit of brown on my OSL. I'll have to clean that up. And in this case, I'm just going to come along here, get that in there. Trying to stick mainly to the areas that I've already gotten the first coat of that mix on, although not entirely. There is some inconsistencies to metal. And we can see now that's really coming along as a coppery color. Really nice old penny. I'm going to bring that. And so I am going to strengthen that here at the top. This is the apex of the model. It's going to have some of the brightest colors on it outside of the lighting effects. And I definitely want to make sure I have a good base of this old penny to work with. Otherwise, some of the brightness would look out of place. It wouldn't have as nice a transition. So I don't want to obliterate everything, but up here, I definitely want there to be more. And even coming in and stippling some of that in, which is what I'm doing right now, and then smoothing it out, I think is totally acceptable here, especially along this outside. Leaving the inside one, it's gonna actually receive a glow from the satan in the middle. And so that's gonna be a little bit, um, have a little bit different thing going on. And so yeah, we're just gonna come in. Yeah, stippling is definitely the way to go right here that the dry brushing was fine until it just wasn't quite adding enough. 
now. So now this inner piece is a little bit darker than this outer piece. It still has paint on it, but, excuse me, but because of the stippling, uh, we were able to really build that up nicely and add a little bit of texture to it. All right, I'm gonna start with dry brushing because I do wanna get this paint on both sides of this, this corner here, but I do not want it to build up too greatly uh, on the other side. I wanna keep it mostly to this outside piece. Again, always thinking about where the light is gonna end up. And in this case, the light is mostly coming from the top down, outside of the OSL effects. So we wanna to continue to build that color up mostly on this outside, but then somewhat on the inside too, just not very heavily. And this is drying out just a tad. I'm worried that if I grab this with my other brush, it'll be too much. So I'm gonna take my water brush and add just a hair to it. There we go. You can even hear it uh, when it starts to get dry here. And it looks like I might actually have to mix a little bit more of this up. Uh, that's totally fine. It just takes a moment to do. Coming in, continuing to build this color up, especially towards the top, especially towards the outer piece here. And so let's see what we can grab here for stippling. I am gonna stipple some of this in and then smooth it down. Yep, so there we go. And in here, I'm gonna come in here, stipple around that. And I'm gonna come in here around this area. Not entirely, because I do want to keep that there. All right. I'm gonna smooth this out. It went on a little bit too textured for copper. I can see a little spot right there that's starting to do something interesting. That is just a little bit of tearing, but we're gonna hide it, because we're gonna stipple it in and no one's ever gonna know. We're gonna hide this transition piece right here because that V right there is what really gives it away. But if we break that up just like that, it becomes very difficult to tell that that's what happened. There we go. And because that's so bright right there, we're actually gonna bring this up here. Continue to stipple in, being very careful not to stipple into that little hole. Oh, get you back into the frame here. Being very careful not to stipple into this little hole, but to go fairly heavy under it and over it a bit. And let's get in here. And we're gonna brighten up that piece right there, but we're gonna stick mostly to the outer edge here of this. All right. Well, you can see just a little bit of that tearing there. I am gonna come in just to break that. There we go. And around here. We're just gonna smooth that down there. Leaving some of that red, but blending it in just there, catching that edge. And there we go. Let's make sure they mostly match come in here with just a touch of stippling. Now, a lot of this is going to get done over again. So, no reason to go too crazy with blending this portion, but I do want something nice to work with. Same thing here, and I do want this to be roughly round. So it started out kind of square from the way I had done it, but now you can see these areas are still dark, which is super nice because that's gonna really help this effect pop. All right, one left, and I do need some more Basculus Brown on, but I don't need to mix up any more of my red. I should be able to do this in this last go. So let's go ahead and grab that, what we need to mix it in and get it the same as the other. Grab some more, grab some more. In fact, I'm just gonna grab all of this and bring it over, there we go. It needed quite a bit to, to get it in to the right color, but that's it right there. 
nice kind of coppery color. Yep, you can see it looks the same on the paper and on the palette. Always kind of checking, always just trying to make sure we're matching here. We're going to start at the top and we're going to start working our way down. Same thing. Uh, we can put a little bit on this inside, but we mostly want to focus this on the outer edge here. This is again going to be one of the brighter portions of the model. Making sure there's not too much. This is a good opportunity to do a little bit of stippling as well on this. And we're going to now focus kind of here. I'm going to make sure I get this edge. I do want that edge to be seen and I'm going to put this at the bottom here too where that light would catch. With a nicer brush you can get that just in there right where the light's going to be but for the most part the people looking at this will still think it looks pretty good even if that is overshooting it just a bit. I think there's more harm to be done by not having it at all than by having it just a little too strong especially with it being inconsistent with the rest of the model at that point. All right, and same thing here. We have these little pieces here with the overlap. I am going to reach in there, strengthen that, and I'm going to reach in here and get my first little bit right there because that piece is facing almost directly upwards again. Come in here, get some more paint. Again, one of the big downsides of this, you can see how much paint is just all over the place. You end up wasting quite a bit of paint uh, to get this effect. So not that you shouldn't do it, but you just got to be aware of what you're in for. If you don't have a lot of the colors you're about to use, you may want to consider getting a little bit more before you, before you start, especially on a big model. Right, bring this back down. We're going to strengthen that up too. Man, just such a lovely penny color that's going on there. You can really see it just looks like an old penny with all those kind of warm reds and browns under it. It's very nice. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to strengthen this up just a little bit because again, these are kind of kind of pushed out. Come in here, strengthen these edges. They're going to receive some more paint in just a moment, but I definitely want these, these topmost pieces to be pretty strong. Yeah, very nice. So we have that really nice kind of coppery penny color that's on there. I'm just going to fix these two right here. These, when I put it down, I just noticed that there is just a bit more of this area. It's it's just a little more exposed than I thought. I thought these these turrets here were just a little over it, but they're not. All right. Excellent. So now we're going to move along to some of our brighter colors. In fact, the first brighter color that we're going to use is actually still Basculus Brown, but we're not going to mix in those other brown reds to desaturate it out. So we're going to move from here and then I'm actually going to think on it. We're going to test a little spot. This might be too much um, unless we bring it back down with this. We'll have to see. So I don't want to go overboard and then ultimately create something that looks a little more um, golden. I do definitely want it to be a brassy color. So let's get some pure basculus. We're going to go ahead and put this in our palette. We're going to stick it in one of our open slots. I'm not going to bring any brown into this. This is going to be this pure basculus brown color, or any more brown, I should say. It does have brown in it, but I do want it to be a bit brighter of a yellow color. Let's go ahead and make sure our brush is really clean. Have just a touch of moisture in it, and we're going to start at the bottom here because we're going to make sure we are not overdoing it. All right, let's see. That's a really nice mustardy color. Let's see what it looks like when it goes on. Okay, make sure you're in focus. Yeah, okay. Yep, that's definitely bringing it up without overdoing it. So I think we are good to go on this color here. This is when we're gonna concentrate really on just the top areas. 
So we are, we're getting to the point now where we don't really want this um, on the bottom half of each one of these. We wanna make sure that we're keeping it towards the top. Uh, maybe just hitting some of the lines here to really bring out these edges. Yep. So same thing here, you can see that before I do it, it's a very kind of darker penny color, but as soon as I start to hit it here, you can really see it start to, to brighten out with more of our penny color. All right, oh, that's too much. We'll blend that in, that's not gonna be a problem. There we go. Same thing there, just gonna blend that in. And we're gonna stick to this top half of each one of these. So ultimately what's gonna happen is each one of these is actually gonna go a bit faster because we're, we're painting less and less of the model with this kind of technique. For this, I'm just gonna get this whole top area. I'm gonna avoid the inside of this one. And I'm gonna focus right here on this area. We definitely don't wanna obliterate all of those good reds. Oh yeah. All those good reds and previous colors that we have in there. I do wanna make sure I hit kind of the, the top edges of that though. There we go. And maybe right there as well, yeah. Excellent. And so that's really starting to come up. You can see a big difference between this bottom piece and this top piece here. We're really getting closer to brass more so than copper, although this still, you could say, is a very bright kind of penny color, which is okay. That, that layer, though, of a very warm red-brown is really what's helping us tend towards brass versus towards copper or towards gold, which would be a little bit colder, especially the gold that we're going to be doing here. And I'm just continuously applying this around, sticking to the top half of each one of these. A little more here. All right. Go in there. You can really see any small textures that you may have added to this model. This is actually, I think, that little mark might have actually been a fingernail mark on the model. So you can see when you're dry brushing like this, uh, anything you've put in the model, any small ridge, especially at this, this level of getting it on, the brightest pieces, they will tend to grab whatever it is you've done and really run with it. They're going to show off your textures, which is a good thing. We definitely wanna highlight those textures on our model. But if you've made mistakes, if you've done weird stuff, like I just did with way too much paint there, which is okay, we're gonna blend that in, you will start to see it in your model. All right, hitting the top here. All right, yeah, really nice. We're starting to really see uh, the fruits of our labor here with the depth of color that we're getting from this. So we're gonna come in here, add just a touch of that, mostly towards the top of these columns, leaving the bottom here. We're gonna get that in there and towards the top here, being very careful not to touch the rest of that. And we will have to come in here and clean up some of that, but cleanup is one of the later steps here. And it's possible that when we're done, we won't have to do it at all. I will have to clean that, but for the most part, uh, it looks like we're going to get away with very little cleanup on this, uh, despite the kind of size of this brush, which was making me think there'd just be a ton of cleanup. <laughs> but uh, I'm not even sure what I would do to totally clean this up if that were really the problem, uh, because I would be cleaning up with the same size brush. So, well, maybe it was just wishful thinking. All right. So we've done all of the bits of kind of brass that are on the bottom of this, which are great. And now we're gonna move on to doing these bigger pieces here at the top. So same deal, same paint. I'm gonna come in here. I am gonna grab some of the moisture actually from this other side rather than go into my pot over here. And I'm gonna grab a little more paint, 
a little too zealous there with removal. There we go. All right, same dealio. I'm gonna stick mostly with this to this outside piece for sure this time. Uh, a little bit towards the top is okay, but we wanna make just really careful that we're not adding too much of this in a place that we don't want it. This outer ridge is perfect to start. So it's this little bottom area right here really concentrating down there. I'm gonna go across the ridge here and the top, that's too much. I'm gonna remove that with my finger, come back, smooth it over. Same thing there. I'm gonna get some of this edge and I'm gonna leave that inner edge actually alone. I'm not gonna do too much there. So we can really start to see the differences here. That's too much, remove that, smooth over what we have. Catching this line here, that line there, the center portion that you can see right there. Really focusing, staying away from this inner piece for the most part. Coming down here, catching this area that I've been talking about where the light's gonna go at the very bottom, catching this piece right here. And this little shelf right there, same thing on this side if I didn't do it, and I didn't, not really. There we go. That is really looking good there. <clears throat> very much like where this is going with this penny color and yep, that looks good I'm gonna add just a touch pull that off all right now let's do this this portion and then I'll take care of the center piece on that in just a moment we're gonna hit let's make sure we're back in frame there we go gonna hit there making sure to catch this ridge this ridge even though it is not gonna be super duper bright it's definitely gonna be brighter than all the areas around it and that is really what matters I'll come back in here catch this area you can see it's just this area underneath this damage and so that should really be bright it should really grab the light as it doesn't have anything above it to block it all right so we're gonna grab this line here keeping that nice and bright not a ton but we do want it to be there pull that in there i'm going to leave this red right in here too we don't want to obliterate everything we did in the previous step i'm going to turn it here make sure we're still in focus and in camera and we're going to pull that down same thing here this is going to be some of the brightest stuff so we're going to make sure the ridge has plenty of this color especially the upper portion of it And we're gonna come in here, do the same. Right below here, we're really gonna focus below that. Really right there on that shelf. I'm gonna make sure this ridge also gets it. It's a little more difficult here because we're just relying on the dry brush to kind of grab it versus being able to really focus in where it's gonna go. But this is such a large piece right here. This ridge is so large that you can pretty reliably uh, just let this brush grab it. In fact, for pieces like this, I could be using an even larger brush. Uh, this would probably be just fine. All right, letting that come down in there, bringing this around, still being able to see all those colors under it, just absolutely excellent, really like that. And so we're coming in here, we have this piece here, we're gonna juxtapose, you can see here, this piece versus this piece you can see that yellow coming through all right we're gonna move that nope that's too much we're gonna remove some there we go sticking mostly to the outside this is the last one that we have to do catching that ridge catching this ridge and i will go back in and i'll make sure that inner piece that we had shown before does get some i'll show you what i'm talking about in just a moment we're gonna leave that red there. We're not gonna come, we're gonna focus a little more on the top here and on that other ridge. And there, and we're gonna leave it because I do like that red showing through from two layers ago, I believe. And we're gonna do a little bit less of the red showing through on this side. I keep coming back to the top here too, just in case I have a little much on my brush it won't build up at the bottom where I definitely don't want to see too much of this. OK, 
catch this ridge and make sure we're showing that off. All right. And that looks like we've got it there. I'm going to strengthen it right here on the top edge of this and on the top of this because these again are really front facing. I'm going to strengthen it here as well on these places that are very much kind of out because they are brighter. So I'm just going to strengthen that here and right here. Looks like I never hit that, so it's good that we're coming back around. All right, let's take a look at what we have now. Really nice, just darker red penny color going to a lighter copper. And we have one more layer, maybe two. Just depends on how it looks. We'll make that decision when we get there. But yeah, really like that. That really nice copper color. All right. Clean out the brush, move over our palette to our next spot, and we're going to come in with some Flash Blitz Yellow. Now this might be too much. Phoenix Flame you can see is a little bit less bright, so that might be what I end up doing. But let's go ahead and start with our Flash Blitz. It is very bright, but we have such warmth underneath it, it might be okay. And so we're gonna find out. So I'm only gonna get one brush full of this to get started in case I have to pivot. Or maybe this with Phoenix Flame will look great. So we'll have to see. This is definitely in test mode to see what I like the most. Because again, I'm going for a warm brass color and not a super bright kind of new penny look here. Because this thing is very, very old. Um, even if it is well taken care of. All right, so let's get most of this out and we're gonna start kind of down here. So let's see. All right, and already I do not like that. That's too bright for what we're trying to do. So we're gonna pivot. Let's go with the Phoenix Flames. Let's see what that looks like. Make sure that's not water. Ooh, it is, look at that. See, this is from my small accident before. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this water out right here. I'm gonna dry these, there we go. Now we're good to go. That's from where I bumped the water container at the very beginning of the video. This Phoenix Flame has not been shook, so I'm gonna go ahead and shook it, shake it, I should say. I'm gonna mute real quick and put it on my night shaker. All right, so now that it's been shook, let's see what we got. Yes, I think that's gonna be quite a bit better. Maybe this other yellow ends up being our final highlight, but looking at this, you can see just from the camera here, this has got a lot more orange in it. I think it's gonna be less of a jump here. So let's see what we got. All right, you can see it on that too. So let's, too much there. Yeah, okay, that's that's where that's more where I'm at. Yep, I like that much better. That is still quite a bit brighter. I think it reads as brass, but without it being way too tinny, uh, the other one just had way too much going on there. Oop, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this a little more because uh, I almost reached for the wrong paint. And that would be bad. And this, we're really focusing just on the very tops of these. This is not a color that we want all the way down this. Definitely want to focus it just on the top, maybe 10, 15% of each model, or of each one of these bits. And then the very, very top, we'll probably go for some um, arid earth highlights on it. And then once we're finished going through the model, we'll probably go back and add some pure white highlights. But that won't be until closer to the end. But I think arid earth will be where we end here. And that'll just be as a highlight color. That will not be as a uh, another layer. Yeah. 
The other one was just too bright. It didn't have enough warmth. This, this is an orange of sorts, and so it does still have a little bit of red. We just deviated too far from our kind of warm red base there. And when we put that really cool color on it, it just, it didn't work. You could really see it kind of clashing because it lacked uh, cohesion. It lacked the red to bring it together. Cool. This one's still doing. So we're gonna focus this on the top area of that. That's too much paint. I'm gonna pull that. I'm gonna pull back a little bit. And we're gonna get that in there. Let's make sure that you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Coming in here. And it's gonna be right on top here. So we're gonna make that pretty strong right there. Same thing here. Got to be careful. I see where I got just a little bit over on where I don't want it. But we're going to focus on the top half of this column here. The top half of this column here. And now this is where I kind of have to look at the brush and see which way the bristles are going. And I'm going to blend that just a hair. And here we go. We're going to come in here and apply that in too. And yeah, that's going to probably be one of the few places on this model I actually end up using null and oil just to darken these areas up and bring that out. This might actually be where I have some, some very light, like arid earth colors that I bring in to try and make those a little brighter. And this one we're going to be really careful with because this is, it's really easy now at this point to kind of overdo your highlights and cause some issues to kind of undo a lot of the good that you've done this whole time. So we're gonna be very careful to keep this mostly towards these upper areas, blending it in just slightly in some places, catching this bottom area here where we would see more of it. Same thing, I'm gonna pull this, just being very careful here, catching that ridge, maybe over here, then right there. Be very careful. And we're blending it across, but we're just doing such a small amount here. Um, we just do not want to, to overdo this here color. And then this can go along most of the back ridge because that is very exposed. And right here at the tops here. And so we'll have this color on here as well. Coming in right from there. You can really see that start to do. We're going to pull it right from here too and from there. And this is where we're going to kind of stipple this in and some of the, the brightest areas that are not really the top here. Because this is such a big piece we do need to add a little visual interest and that really helps. The same is going to be true here. We're going to add just a little bit of stippling in some places just to bring it out. Not too much, we don't want to go crazy, but we do want to see it. Same here, same here. I'm going to bring this color into there, catch that ridge right down there, and then we're going to stipple this in. Now, I'm stippling the, a very, very small amount. This is almost like a continuation of dry brushing, but in stipple mode. Because I just want to barely bring this color and unify these areas in here. So this is this is very subtle here, but it's still there, which is really important to make sure the model is nice and unified. All right. Coming in here. Same thing. This is kind of the the art moment. So we've done a lot of other technical things up until this point. But at this point, this is really where you get to kind of lean in to how you are working the, what's gonna make this model unique. And so taking your time here with these kind of effects is really what's gonna set your model apart from other people who either skipped parts or you know, did a little bit less, uh, which is totally fine. You know, Again, I say pick the parts of the hobby that you really enjoy and lean into them. But if you want your model to look the best on the table, then these are the kind of attention to detail and steps that you're going to need to take if you want to have something that's really, really eye-catching. 
So we're going to bring that down here. We're going to do the same thing here just to give the illusion that maybe this part right here is kind of proud, which it looks like it actually is ever so slightly. This is definitely going to be proud right here, this section. So we hit that. And remember I talked about these sections in here. Same dealio. I'm going to remove most of it in here, but we're going to stipple that color in just right there and on the tops. Same thing here, I'm just turning it here. You can see we're getting this color in here and on that, it was a little too much, so I just pulled it with my finger. A little bit not enough right there. And we're just blending that in and with a little bit of stipple action here, we can actually take care of almost all of that mistake that I made last time. All right, we're coming into the last 20 minutes of the stream, and now we're gonna finish up the highlights on these pieces. And for this, <coughs> we're gonna use a little bit of arid earth, and then we're gonna use a little bit of pure white. So, almost done with the brass pieces here. So, we're gonna be pretty sparing with our arid earth, and we're gonna be very, very sparing with our uh, matte white. All right, this will cool it down just a little bit, but that's okay. We've put so much more effort into getting all these reds in that this little bit shouldn't make that big of a difference here. Then this, we're not dry brushing in. This is going to be stippled, but I don't want a lot on my brush. So we're going to come in. And just hit the very brightest sections here. And you can see I'm dabbing it down with my finger just to kind of smooth that out. I don't want there to be too much going on here, but I do want to, to definitely see this in these corners. Definitely sell that this is a, a metal. Oh, I'm way off of camera here. So bring this in. You can see I'm just stippling just a tiny amount here, only on the very brightest parts. Let's get a few dots here just to get the idea. Same thing here. And I can even go like where there's these holes here. This is actually a good place to do this and really sell that those are those are damaged the way they are. Come in here with these ridges. So yep, this is just little dots, little stippling here, just to sell where this is. And you can even come down here and hit there. Because this again, this is where that light would pool. Coming in here for this one and for this one right here at the bottom. You don't want to overdo this. This is just for those spots that are really going to shine here or that we want to give the illusion of shine. We hit right there and right there. All right, same thing here. I'm going to come in with this, give it a few dabs. come in right through the center here so we can get a really nice kind of shine on that. Get these corners here, all nice. That there, just catching this top ridge here. I'm gonna come through, do the same here, really get some of this on here and in there. Really giving this the idea that this is something that's shiny. Even though it is kind of an older brass, I definitely still want it to look metallic. Excellent. All right, <clears throat> so we're getting that in there. 
we're just putting just a very very small amount of paint on this model here coming in here we're going to catch some of these sections where we have the damage and some of these sections as well as some of this along the back yep, just any place that the light would really catch well we're going to come in right in there same thing here I'm going to hit this top area quite a bit in there along the edge because it would continue down catching these spots here I'm going to kind of blend that, it's a little much, touch, 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 get that, this spot in here, and right now there's, this is, you know, there's no exact science going on here, I'm just catching any of the spots that really look like they would be hitting the light, and there too, especially these two spots that I keep coming back to, I do really like to make sure I catch any of the spots that would very obviously have caught the light so this is, is not a lot going on just bare bare minimum here but it, it does add so much when you have um, these speculative highlights here for where it would be and then we're gonna come in here on this we're gonna come right here on this one and here as well especially on this side and right there at the edge of that damage as well as here at the top we're gonna pull that down that was too much and we're gonna come in here i'm gonna bonk the camera because it wouldn't be a stream with me unless i bonk the camera a few times All right, so here we are. We have quite a bit up, oh, and there's a little one right there I want to catch. There we are. Now, if I had a better brush, <clears throat> I would have come in here, and I would make the upper portions of these bits of damage darker. That would really help to sell uh, the, these shiny bits on the metal. All right. And because this is brass, I think I am going to stop there with my highlights. I do not think I want to go quite to pure white on those highlights. I think I'm going to keep it at arid earth. And we'll see in the very end when, when I'm done. I may or may not decide that it is where I want to go a little further. But we now have this dark copper uh, moving to brass color onto the model and all of this looks very nice very weathered and old it looks just like uh, kind of it really does tend more towards towards a copper color but that's really what I was looking for is a warm color versus the silent king who's gonna be in the middle and he is gonna be uh, a very cold color so even though this does tend more towards copper than it does really brass looking at it overall you can kind of see that I still think that it's going to accomplish the thing I wanted it to accomplish, which is to look a bit warmer than the king. And I see one little portion here. So now I'm just looking over, picking out anything small that I want to hit. And so just a little bit right there. This is just any of these little holes. I want to go across the bottom of the hole and I want to show you where the light is hitting. So I want to, I want to bring that out just a tad. Again, a smaller brush, uh, one that wasn't so crazy <laughs> as this, would definitely serve you well here. That looks good. And these are kind of sharp. So sometimes I'm blending this. This is not a point that you're blending. You do want these little speculative highlights to be that. And we're not going all the way. Like we could definitely take this a, a very different direction, almost like you would see on Power Swords, where you have these kind of really nice, um, uh, shine marks essentially starting with you know darkness going completely to a white then back to dark again and making a kind of anime style shine that's definitely a thing you could have done here uh, but these are quite large 
and they would probably each take something like an hour to do um, to really make them look good, to blend them really well. And that is not where, not really where we wanted to be since we had so much of this to do. But yeah, oh, you're out of camera again, out of focus. So there we are. That's looking quite good. All right. <clears throat> kind of the last 10 minutes here of the stream we've gotten all of these brass metal parts done in this stream and so these are complete uh, we might touch them up here or there but for the most part that's done and the next thing we're going to do in the next one is we're going to focus on finishing up the throne itself we're going to end up getting some of that green color that we wanted in here just a very little bit of green probably with something like a wizard orb that kind of is similar to what we did up here, but it's gonna be a little bit darker. And we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of those highlights down there. So once we finish up the throne, the one after that is going to be these OSL effects on the throne. So that's going to be finishing the throne, and if we have time, which we probably will, in the next one, we'll start doing the light effects. And those may or may not uh, be all done in one go, we'll see. But that is going to be for the next one. Then after that, we are going to tackle the individual characters that are on there, including uh, Sarakon, who's right here. Or Cezarek, sorry. Uh, and then we have his little minions. And most problematically, his cloak, the fleeced skin of a Satan. It'll be difficult to really capture uh, what I want to do on here with this brush. But I now have some ideas, and we're going to see how it goes. It'll be probably one of the last things we do. But I think I'm going to call it here for today, so we don't start something completely different. But thank you all for coming out today to watch the stream. This, of course, will go up on YouTube the next day, 9 a.m., and you can watch the backlog there. And I hope to see you here next time. Have a great day.